great. I didn't realize quite how much we had in common. Um, I, I get asked quite often, gosh, how did this heady topper thing happen overnight? It's success overnight. It, it was not overnight. It was 20 years of a lot of hard work. Um, I met John in 1995, which seems like forever ago. Um, we were both pretty young. We were both out of college. We met at the Vermont Pub and Brewery. He had gone to Penn State. I had gone to UVM. We were both um, business majors. We fell in love pretty quick. I, re I really fell in love with his beer. He <laughs> fell in love with my work ethic, and then it took <laughs> off from there. Um, and for the first eight years of our marriage, we worked very hard on our business plan. John worked on developing recipes for beer. Um, we worked several jobs for different breweries. We built out different breweries. I worked on financial planning. So we spent eight years working as many jobs as possible, saving as much money as we possibly could, and just like really dialing in our business plan. Um, after traveling around the country, we lived in various places, Key West, Jackson Hole. Um, we landed back in Vermont in 2001, and in 2003, we opened up our brew pub in the village of Waterbury. Um, after all these years, we were able to save $30,000, which was like everything to us. Um, with that $30,000, we were able to secure a $150,000 loan, and with that money and a lot of salvaged equipment, a lot of hard work, um, a lot of used kitchen equipment, um, and maxed out credit cards, we opened our brew pub um, on November 29th, uh, 2003. Um, everyone told us, you know, it'll take five years to make money. Three years you should make money. Well, that scared the shit out of me because we had $20 in the bank when we opened. <laughs> We had to make money right away. We had a full staff. Thankfully, we were busy right away. And we, you know what? We knew, we were confident. We knew we would be busy. Everyone told us we were crazy to open a brew pub in Waterbury, but we understood where we were located. You know, we had Mad River Valley, we had Stowe, we had Montpelier, we had Burlington. We knew it was a great spot. And sure enough, we were busy right away. Um, the day after, um, I had been in denial a few weeks, but John made me take a pregnancy test in the basement. <laughs> I took it, I gave it to him, I wouldn't look. He said, we're having a baby. I said, no, oh my God, I just, I just started crying. He said, it's okay, we can do it, we can do it, okay. So 10 months later, I'm hostessing, I'm washing bar glasses, I got the baby and the Bjorn, John's brewing all day. You know, trade off the baby. It was crazy, it was crazy for five years. Um, there were a lot of challenges, we still had a lot of, um, you know, close to empty checkbooks. Um, it was a struggle, but we were successful. We were busy every night. But the fact of the matter is restaurants just don't make money. So, um, you know, we hung in there. We were having fun. Um, we really made a commitment to our community and our employees early on. And I think that's really what made us successful. It's what helped keep us full every night. Employees weren't leaving. You know, we took good care of them. And that was really important, our success. In about 2008, when our son started kindergarten, I started hounding John to open a production brewery. I said, we gotta do this, you know, we're full. Um, every night, people want our beer, we need to get it in a package. Um, and all of our eggs are in one basket right now. It was really scary to me. I had this recurring nightmare that I was gonna be 70 years old and bussing tables, <laughs> or, or worse, washing dishes on Friday night, which I was doing a lot of, it was awful. Um, <laughs> And finally, I, I showed him a spot in 2009, and he said, okay, let's do it. So, all right, so again, we started, we did our financial planning, we salvaged more equipment, we put this financial plan together, and we were able to secure a $300,000 loan. Like, this is big time now. So we built our new production brewery. Um, we were over budget. Um, we were over schedule, you know, our tanks were taking too long to make, we were broke again. Thankfully that summer at the pub we were really busy so we were able to take all the money we were making and sink it back into our new production brewery. Finally, our new cans were gonna roll off the line, we were gonna come out of this mess, we were gonna be making more money, and the day before our cans rolled off the line our pub was destroyed in Tropical Storm Irene. So, you know, it, it was a challenge, um, and people often ask, how did you get through that? And I don't know, you know, I think you, you, have, you have two choices, right? You either give up, you throw in the towel, curl up in a ball and cry, or you just put your head down and get to work, and that's what we did. So we went to the production brewery that morning, kind of clap, yay, new cans, and then we went down to the brew pub and started, um, you know, ordering up tanks to come and sunk, suck all the mud and feces and propane and you know all the sides of fish and beef out of the basement it was a disgusting fetid mess it really was it was awful um 
we started rebuilding our pub. We found out a couple of months later that we wouldn't be able to put our brewery back in the basement again because of new FEMA regulations. So at that point, we leased out the space and we just doubled down at our new production brewery. In the couple of weeks following the flood, um, Vita was making loans available to Vermont businesses that were affected by the flood. So we decided early on, yeah, let's get a $100,000 loan. That'll just hold us over until our insurance comes through. Our insurance, we didn't end up getting much insurance money, but that's a different story. Um, <laughs> that $100,000 was really great because the bills hadn't come in yet from all the companies that were helping us clean up the flood. So we ordered up some tanks. They were delivered within a week and we doubled production right away with that money. And because we knew within three weeks, we would have more income coming in and we just hoped that it would take that long for the new bills to come in and it did, it worked out. Um, in the next four years, <laughs> in the next four years, we increased production 600%. Um, we maxed out our production in Waterbury. Um, you know, this whole heady topper phenomenon really, it took off, it was crazy. People were lining up, people were parking at Shaw's grocery store, crossing the store. You know, our neighbor was out on the front lawn with a shotgun. It was, it was, <laughs> it was, it was great, but we couldn't enjoy it because it was such a, it was a nightmare. There was a lawyer that was arrested for selling beer on the black market, you know, <laughs> like all these crazy things that you didn't think could happen. Um, anyway, we had to close down our retail shop. It was too busy. Fortunately, we had kind of seen the writing on the wall. You know, about a month before, I was like, Jesus, John, we're so busy. We're going to have to close this retail shop. No, no, it'll all be fine. But I said, no, we're going to have to close this thing down. We can't handle the crowd. So we started talking about what that would look like. And we just started to um, really think about how we could keep making beer and selling beer with the retail shop closed. So. None of our staff knew this, but the day the state came in and told us we had to shut down, we said, sure, fine. We made the announcement, we shut down a week later, and our plans were in place to um, increase our distribution, and so that's what we did. And then for the next couple of years, um, we started planning our new production brewery, and now we just got a loan for an $11 million project, which we completed. We now have 49 employees. Um, we still distribute within 30 miles of our breweries. Um, it's just a great time to be doing business in Vermont. We have an incredible staff. Uh, right now we're just really focused on um, continuing to work with our community, build our foundation, um, and stay connected to our employees. And that's that. That's all I've got. <laughs> there, was one, there was one thing I wanted to add. This is what I wanted to say. So reflecting on the last 14 years, there are really three things to all of the entrepreneurs here um, that stick out to me with our success. And one thing is authenticity, and Allison said authenticity as well. Just staying true to your brand, staying true to yourself, following your gut instinct, you know, and kind of sometimes you have to ignore the noise and just do what you know is right. Um, the second thing is really taking care of your employees and your community because when times are tough, those are the people that will support you. And finally, and this is not as interesting, but really important. You really have to have a good business plan, and there are two parts to it. There's your craft. You have to make a really good product or provide a good service, and you really have to have good, solid financial planning. And I can't tell you how many young entrepreneurs come to me with a business plan, and there's no financials, and that you really need to have good assumptions. You have to have great pro formas, and you know, don't reach for the stars. They need to be really realistic. You need to kind of plan for the worst and figure out how you're going to manage during those times. Now I'm done. <laughs>